My next guest just earned his 10th professional victory in spectacular fashion, getting a TKO victory over Nate Garib at LFA 184 last week. Dougie, welcome back to the show, man. Congratulations. What a very impressive performance. And happy birthday. You uh, you aged on me since the last time I saw you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate you. And happy birthday to you as well. That that's right. That's a fun fact about me. I got old. We both got older since the last time we spoke. How about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a a very important question for you. We talked about food the last time you were on here, and yeah. I was gonna. I asked you. I was like, "Yo, like, after you um fight, like, what's gonna be your uh, go to meal?" So, like, what was that first like cheat meal that you were able to have after the fight? And did you drink some beers too? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love beers. <laughs> Did, and did you get some tacos? Because I believe that's yeah. exactly what you told me. Honestly, I didn't get anything yet, like a cheap meal, you know, like something that I haven't yet. But I'm probably going to get this week. I try to be clean for at least like a week, try to get back slowly. And then my mm -hmm. body don't get like, you know, yeah, too yeah. Like, like, what the fuck? You were like <laughs> getting really clean for like, for like a yeah. month, a month and a half, and now you're all of a sudden eating all the trash. My body's gonna get crazy, you know. No, so I, I try to get that slow, little by little. I'm I'm getting back, but uh, for sure I'm craving meat, bro. I'm craving steak. So well, tonight, you I'm probably it. gonna get some steak. Yeah. Well, Dougie, you absolutely deserve it. And I, I see that you've been staying busy, like even after the fight, right back to the gym. I see you running. I see you getting in your road work. Uh, and I know you also have a couple other teammates that are preparing for their bouts. What have you been up to the past week uh, since since the fight? And are you kind of like maybe shifting more into just being a good teammate uh, for now? Yeah, uh, I, I came. I, I kind of like get back. I kind of got back slowly to training. I went to the boxing gym. You know, I got a, like a few like a few uh, training partners fighting. So I like to be like very helpful to them. You know, be at the gym helping helping them as much as I can, whatever they need it. And I know soon I'm going to give another fight, so it's good to keep in shape. You know, thankfully I'm not hurt. I didn't get any injuries, so I'm, I'm healthy. And that was actually, before we get into the fight itself, I was going to ask you about your health. I, I watched the uh, footage again, and I saw that, you know, he landed some low kicks on you, and then he stomped on your foot a bunch. So, like, you're cleared. You're not yeah. under suspension or anything like that? Nothing. Seven days. I have nothing in my, my body. The well, seven days is normal because I just had a fight. That's the commission, right? That's the basic. But, uh, literally, I have nothing. Like, I, I'm healthy. He got me, like, good kicks, but that wasn't, like, that. That wasn't, like, too strong. They hit me, but they didn't hurt me, you know? So I, I didn't think it was uh, I, I, I was thinking like if anything, it was just really minor for you, because like I said, I saw you on Instagram and you were getting road work in like a few days after the fight. So I was like, all right, well, it, his foot's not broken and no, uh, his calf, even close. <laughs> his calf isn't like too messed up if he's getting road work in like that soon after the fight. Yep. Yep. D Dougie, let's talk about this fight at LFA 184. You fought a really, really tough kid uh nate garib and I, I, we we talked about him at length and i was curious take me back to that fight because there's a lot that happened in the very first round like did he show show you what it was that you were preparing for or were you a little uh, surprised at what he did in the first round yeah yeah he showed me what i expected you know he He's all the time in the interview saying that, oh, I need to be in the UFC. I deserve. I see a bunch of bums over there, so that's my shot. And I expect that he will be like, oh, that's my shot, you know. Mm -hmm. I gotta. So I, I expect, I expect that he will be like prepared this fight. So, so do I, you know. Yeah, I expect everything. Uh, he was very excited in the first round, you know, very throwing a lot of volume on me, and I was able like you know, to see some, some openings and I was, you know, just taking my time. But in the same time, he got me like two good shots. I felt that was like the best shots he had it. And, and I was like, okay, okay, I think I'm good. And then in the second round, I talked to my coaches, we did some adjustments and I came that way. 
I, I watched his aggression and I watched him throw with everything that he had for five minutes. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, he is fighting at a really, really high pace. And I'm going to be very, very curious if he can sustain that in round number two, because if he punched himself out, he could be in trouble going into this next round. And I was curious, Dougie, like when you saw how aggressive he was, did you sense him toward the uh, end of the very first round? Did you sense him getting tired at all? I didn't notice anything, but he probably, you know, he probably stepped back a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Not like the same pace as he, he was in the first round, but, but yeah, probably. I uh, didn't notice anything, honestly. I just came with a different mindset for the second round. Like, all right, so I'm on a fight. What did your uh, coaches tell you when you were on the uh, bench uh, after the very first round? Like, what adjustments did they ask you to uh, make okay. going into the second? <laughs> One of my coaches, Diori, he talked to me. He looked at me and he said, are you going to stop fucking around? Are you going to start fighting? And I was like, yes, sir. And I was like, fuck, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. I'm fighting. And then Coach Joel Diaz as well was telling me, you know, just throw your hands. He's going to feel it. Throw your hands. He's going to feel it. And my other coach, Felipe, was telling me, you know, like, if you feel, if you feel comfortable, there's takedowns too. You're really good. Just if you see the opening, taking down. And, and I really like this. You know, okay, I just felt like this. Let's go. I mean, you know, I felt the fire with it. Um, I felt that I mean, let's do it. In, in the second, really early on, like you guys clinched and then you hit him with a few different things in the clinch. And from what I remember, like he broke out of that clinch. He did not want to be in there with you, clinched up with you at all. And that is where at that point when he broke out of the clinch and then you pursued him, that is where I felt like the tide, the momentum of the fight started shifting over to you. We start seeing him back yeah. off. We start seeing you pursue him. And can you tell yeah. me a little bit about uh, that exchange? Like uh, when you clinched him, like that to me seemed to be like the very first significant strike uh, from your end in that fight. Yeah, in my point of view, it's the first round. He was putting volume on me and I was very de defensive. So I was defending, you know, just try to look the shots, defending myself. And then, and then what I felt in the second round, he kind of got surprised because when he stepped in to try to like, to try to make me backwards again, and I just stand in the pocket like, okay, let's bring it on. And then that moment, I felt that he kind of like, ooh, like now I got to fight. So after this moment, he tried to clinch me and I clinched with him together. And then I did him back out. And then I hit him with the uppercut in the clinch. And I felt that, you know, I landed. That wasn't that too hard, but I guess he felt my hand. And then he was trying to back back up like this. And then I just pushed in and was I was like cutting it off like over the top, hooks. I was trying to land it. Because I saw that he felt my hand. At what point, Dougie, did you know that he was very, very badly damaged and you knew that uh, the finish was there? Like, you hit people hard, and most people, like, they get one of those from you and, and they're out. And in your case, like, you tagged him repeatedly. Can you tell me uh, how you finished the fight? I think he felt in the second punch already, and also the judge. The, the judge would have stopped that fight in the second punch. I, in my opinion, I think it was out already mm -hmm. in the second punch. I wouldn't say out, out, like unconscious, but like he couldn't fight anymore. In the the, uh, punch. the overhand the left, right? Left hook. Oh, the left hook. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I remember like you hit him with a lot of things. You hit him with the left hook, and then you followed it up with an overhand right, I want to say. I, I think you did at some point. Yeah. Maybe it was the, before that. The, the, first, the first one, we were in the clinch, and I pushed in a little bit, and I got my range, and I threw an overhand, and then okay. landed clean. And then he felt that. He wobbled, and then I came, and I come following him with the left hook, and then I landed clean as well, and then he wobbled more, and then – the judge didn't stop it. I think that that was the moment already. And then I was like, okay, I gotta hit more. 
and I'll just keep following up until I stop the fight. Thank goodness it got stopped when it did. Uh, I wish your opponent a speedy recovery, and uh, you know I wish him well moving on, moving forward in his MMA career. But for you, Dougie, back to back fights where you have put out highlight reel finishes against top prospects. Like you didn't really have an opportunity to talk about that on the mic, but like, what were like the emotions? What were some of the things that you were feeling um, in getting your second really no, really big victory on a big, in a, on a big card? Uh, like how you just did, you've done this back to back times now, man. It's been really impressive. Yeah. I'm really happy, dude. I'm really happy. Uh, my whole career, I was like, you know, fighting for an opportunity, all the best opportunities I had. I would say that I wasn't like that prepared. I didn't have like a great team behind it. And then um, I wouldn't say like a team team, but like I didn't have the structure that I have today, you know? And all the training partners, all, all the, you know, even the coaches, you know? So I wouldn't say that I had a good opportunities before, you know, I fought some good guys before, and some of them I lost. But I think that was important in my career. That makes what that made it who I am right now. You know, uh, that's what I mean. Like I think, you know, it's just just coming up now. You know, like just all the things that I work hard and and I still doing. It's you know just paying off. I look at you. And after what you've done in back-to-back fights, highlight reel finishes, I believe, well, frankly, I don't want to see you fight in the LFA anymore. I think you've earned an opportunity. I think you have spent a lot of time on the regional MMA scene. I think you're ready for the next level, and that's what I would like uh, for, I would like your next opportunity to be in the UFC. And for you, it's kind of an interesting spot, right? Because it's like, you're kind of in, you're kind of waiting for something to happen. And in your case, you're a featherweight, but oftentimes when you get that call in the UFC, oftentimes it's a short notice opportunity and they'll say like, Hey, can you make 155 pounds? Is that something you're thinking about between now and the next few months? Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I try to keep my weight. I was low. I was, you know, in like fighting, I wouldn't say camp, camp way, but very low. So I can make that way easier. But, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it's like four days notice, three days notice. I can fight for 55. I don't mind. At a bare minimum, you're either going to get a title fight for LFA, I would think, or at a, or you'll more than likely end up going into the UFC. But for one of those two opportunities for you, whether it be getting a title opportunity with the LFA or making your UFC debut, like what would that mean for you, like knowing that, you have put on some very impressive performances and you're going to get a big fight next. Um, how, how excited does that make you feel? Oh, that's uh, very exciting, man. Very excited and also uh, get, gets me, you know, to think that you got to you gotta train more. You got to be ready, you know, because I know something's going to come and I got to be ready and show that and show it again another, another good work. So... It's it's a good feeling. I feel happy and I feel exciting, but also it's a tension. You gotta be oh, okay. So you gotta train more. You gotta get better. I need to be better than my last fight, and you know, because every fight it's another, it's another stress, but it's a good stress. Something that we like to do. It's a pleasure to watch you perform because you're exciting and uh, you know you you're an entertaining fighter. And I wanted to give you an opportunity, Dougie, if there's anyone that you wanted to thank, any teammates that you needed to talk about uh, before I let you go. Uh, the floor is yours, sir. Someone that I want to thank right now. Um, yeah, all my coaches, my whole team, you know, the team Bloodline, you know, Sports Combat. That's, you know, it's, they have, have been a game changer in my career. Right training, right structure, you know. My manager, Cub Swenson, Money Ahmadi, uh, they're both like doing a, an incredible job as a manager. And I'm really happy, man. Really happy. Dana White, Sean Shelby, I got your next featherweight right here. Make sure you uh, make sure you sign this guy. He's exciting and he knocks people out. Was there not to like? Dougie, thank you so much for being back on thank the program, you. sir. I look forward to having you back on the program ahead of either your My LFA pleasure. title fight 
or your UFC debut. Let's run it, baby. Let's do it, baby. <laughs>